Hello everyone, Chess Hoodie here. Uh, today we will start a new series. It's about openings, uh, openings for beginners. And the first opening I chose to show you is King's Gambit. It is a very old opening uh, that starts with moves um, like this. A pawn to a4, pawn to e5, and now pawn to f4. Okay, so in this video I'm not going to focus uh, on variations. Uh, we're just going to talk about the ideas and where do the pieces go. So first of all, um, let's uh, check what are the options uh, for the black player. So main one is to capture that pawn. Then we have the option of offering a pawn as a counter-attacking option. And then we have a developing move that ignores uh, the, the offer. And we have some quiet moves like this one. But, okay, we'll talk about all of these. Um, let's first start with the ideas. So what happened now? What happened when black uh, captured here? So the first thing that we can notice is that the pawn that was on e5 is now on e4, so it does not control this square anymore. And that means that in the future it will be much easier for white to push this pawn two squares up and take central control. So what do I mean by central control? So if you imagine this pawn here, then the two pawns would be controlling uh, all the central squares in front of them. Uh, so that is central control. So this is uh, the basic idea of this gambit. All right, what else can we conclude uh, that happened here? So uh, one thing uh, that is important to notice is that black uh, spent some time. So he played from here to here and then to here. So he hasn't developed any pieces. Okay, white hasn't uh, developed any pieces either, but with his next move he can continue to develop his pieces and maybe gain some uh, more substantial time advantage. So where do the pieces go? What do you think? What about this knight? Where does it belong? So the most logical square for that knight is this one. Uh, first of all, from there, it controls uh, this square, so this queen uh, will not be uh, so encouraged to attack. And then, from uh, f3, the knight, of course, has some influence over the center, and is sometimes ready to maybe spring into action this way. <coughs> so in most games, uh, this g1 knight goes to f3 and then decides later what to do. Okay, now uh, how about this bishop? Where would you place it? So first, uh, it doesn't have much uh, uh, prospects on this diagonal, since uh, King's Gambit is an attacking opening it should find some attacking post and that post is this square so most of the time the bishop will go this way uh, less likely uh, to go here or here although sometimes it can go uh, to b5 uh, but most likely it will go to c4 and from c4 it will uh, control d5 and also it will uh, post itself aggressively on uh, this diagonal. Why is this important? Why is this diagonal so important for this bishop? 
Uh, all right, so uh, the answer lies in the fact that uh, black captured here and opened the F file. So if you imagine uh, king uh, castling and then a rook coming over, uh, that rook will influence, uh, it, uh, exert some pressure along the F file. So, um, with all that in mind, uh, let's draw all the arrows. So, something like uh, this. We can see that white has some very aggressive intentions. And sometimes uh, he can succeed in uh, achieving those intentions. Uh, let's talk about the other pieces. Uh, so, we are left with the queen. So, queen usually doesn't develop uh, before the other pieces, but sometimes it can. Sometimes it can. It depends on the situation. It has many options. It has many options. Uh, it can go in this direction. Uh, once the king moves, it can go uh, like this into the attack. Or if we imagine uh, this pawn move, then uh, maybe the queen can go uh, like this. So it all depends on um, exact position, but these are some options for the queen. Uh, how about this bishop? Uh, most likely he will uh, either recapture this pawn or if the pawn somehow uh, gets removed, maybe uh, the bishop will uh, proceed towards this diagonal. So it all depends, but that's his main objective to go to an active post like that. And we are left with this knight which will mo most probably go here. Uh, from there it will control the center. Sometimes it will be uh, <coughs> it will be utilized via these squares. All right. And this rook, uh, it's not clear where it goes, but if we imagine that all these pieces have moved, um, most probably the rook will go either here or here. All right. Uh, with all that in mind, um, we can see the whole picture of White's strategy. So he gave up the pawn here. Uh, to in order to open the F file and to um, reduce the pressure on this square. So, in that manner, he can dream and maybe achieve that dream of some kind of development like this. And that would be very active development. Of course, White is not gonna, black is not gonna sit and let white do whatever he wants. But um, with these basic ideas in mind, uh, you should be able to come up with some good moves when you play a game. Uh, even though, even though you're a beginner, uh, this, these uh, general principles and uh, um, optimal positions for the pieces. Uh, will definitely guide you into making uh, good moves. Uh, also, uh, you should not blindly follow these um, guidelines. Uh, this is just uh, something to lean on, or something to think about. But depending on the position, you can, of course, uh, change um, change the change the, the, the places where you want to place your pieces, the squares, uh, all right. Uh, so, so, okay, so let's say uh, black captures uh, like we have in this position. So how should white continue? So the main move is uh, knight to f3 and uh, in the next video I will show you a crazy way to play with knight on f3 and I will explain why I'm showing the crazy way. Uh, also, uh, white can opt for a bishop's gambit, so-called bishop gambit, which leads to more sane position in my uh, positions, in my opinion. So I will give you two options. Uh, 
crazy way and a more sound way. I uh, will also tell you which one I recommend. Uh, some other options for white are this move, but uh, this move, it's not a bad move, but uh, I don't recommend it for beginners uh, as well as this move, because um, even though they are decent moves, they require some deeper understanding uh, to play well, uh, especially uh, the art of defense. Uh, so with uh, bishop c4 or knight f3, you're going to attack. And with knight c3 and bishop e2, uh, against both these moves, uh, both of these moves, uh, black has this check, and that will uh, dislodge the king, and then you have to defend. You have to defend uh, skillfully to play this position, but uh, uh, maybe not the best idea for beginners. Okay, so let's just show one little trick uh, to finish and wrap up uh, this uh, lecture. So let's say black does not take, and he either plays bishop here or pawn here uh, or some other move that does not capture the pawn. It doesn't really matter. Maybe this one. So now the time comes for the first trick in this opening and that is you should never, you should never make this recapture if your king is not secure. Uh, so why is this king not secure? Uh, there isn't a knight here, the king is still in the center, and by, by making uh, this recapture, uh, white opened up this um, line. And uh, uh, what can happen now is uh, black can punish white by giving this check, and uh, white has basically only two moves, one is really terrible. If you block with the pawn, then uh, queen captures the pawn with check and with the attack on the rook. So this is basically game over. And if you react a little bit better, so if you don't do this, uh, you can move king here. But this is also not so good because now um, Black restores material equality. Actually, he can even uh, win the pawn, and white uh, is stuck with his king in the center. So basically, it's a terrible position. All right, so this was um, the intro. I hope you understood the main ideas, and in the following days, uh, more videos will come, uh, which will explain some lines in more detail. Um, Thank you for watching, um, please comment below and uh, share and subscribe. Um, have a nice day, see you again, bye!